She won Most Talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Okay, Megan, I love a good intermittent fasting story, and I've kind of, you know, poached on your social media, and I could see you've had great success. Here we are in 2022. When did you start IF? Um, Technically January, like the first time I started it was January of 2020. And then a whole lot of stuff happened with the pandemic and everything. And I might have emotionally gone off the rails a little bit. No judgment. No judgment. <laughs> right. But I buttoned it all back up in September. So I really feel like my actual anniversary date is the beginning of September of 2020. Oh, okay. So, um, how did you hear about uh, intermittent fasting? What what made you think, well, this sounds good. <laughs> well, it didn't sound good. when Right. I it doesn't. Started. Right. <laughs> It sounded horrendous, um, <laughs> but I first heard of it from a coworker, and I thought that is a crazy fad diet that I will never do. Right? Um, not eat like we're taught from the time we're tiny that we're supposed to eat three to five meals a day, and like the more you eat, the more your your mm-hmm. metabolism is right. Put another and doing a good job. They would say, "Put another log on that fire." Exactly. No use kept your insulin so high you couldn't tap into your fat storage we exactly. now know yeah all that did was teach me how to eat all day long and like I was really good at eating so <laughs> I just ate all day long so she came to me we I work for the state police here in Idaho and every year our colonel does what's called the colonel's challenge and there's four points that or four goals that he gives us to try to make every year And we don't have to make all of them, um, but he encourages us to at least make one. And if you do one, then you get like a t-shirt or something of that sort saying you participated in the Colonel's Challenge that year. Um, And that year I was going to go for cardio and um, weight loss because weight loss is something I could always participate in because like dropping 5% of your body weight is pretty easy to do on a crash diet and then you can just gain it back and not worry about it, but you meet your goal and it's fine, right? So that year I was still planning. I had just gotten my this Peloton bike that's behind me. <laughs> and so I was wanting to use the Colonel's Challenge as a, a like motivation to get on the bike too. So my goals were cardio and uh, weight loss. And one of my coworkers came up to me and she's like, you should just try intermittent fasting. You'll lose the weight at the, by the end of the Colonel's Challenge. So the Colonel's Challenge is about... I don't even know how long it is. It's almost three months, two and a half months. So it goes from the beginning of January to the middle of March. And she's like, you'll for sure lose it. I always lose a good amount of weight, but she was also using it as a fad diet. Like she would go on it and off it and on it and off it. With intermittent so really, fasting? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And she still does. Like she still never. Here's the deal. You and I know the hard part is those first two weeks. I don't want to go back there. Right? Ever. Ever yeah. again. I don't want to but, refill my glycogen stores where I'm shaky, hungry, tired, and thinking about food. Intermittent exactly. fasting is the best way to break your love of constant food is then you quit thinking about it. Exactly. Like that. And that's exactly how I used it. Once I started it. Well, I shouldn't say once I started it, I never went back because I totally did. But <laughs> I, she there, was using it kind of more like a bad diet. Go ahead. That, well, I said there were circumstances extenuating it, yes, pandemic there, circumstances. So you are forgiven, was. my child. But anyway, so um, she would use it as a fat diet. Yeah, which I mean, and she still does, but she's not doing it right either. Like she never learned how to clean fast and she no longer works with me either. So I can't tell her how awesome I'm doing on this clean fasting. I mean, unless I reach out, but, um, so I started with no guidance whatsoever other than just don't eat until like noon. (laughs) Right. And then you can eat lunch and dinner and then stop eating after dinner. That's about how I was instructed. I just was pushed in a direction. So when said eat from noon to six, whatever you want, I went, okay. Like you didn't look up anything, didn't think about it. So same. I didn't look up anything. I just took it as what it was. And I did really well. I actually lost about 20 pounds during that Colonel's challenge. Oh my. Yeah. Just, and it was just a 16, eight is what I was doing. So I actually did really well on it between the cardio and the intermittent fasting. I lost the weight that I needed. And then the pandemic hit in March and I actually did okay when the pandemic first hit, but my mother-in-law went on hospice like right after the pandemic hit and it became, the pandemic was stressful and then it became 
even more stressful Mm. because we couldn't go see her. Like it was, it was rough. And I just emotionally ate through all of that. And about midsummer, I decided that I was going to do keto because, you know, I would, I did every diet under (laughs) the sun in my adult life. Like I've, I've tried, I tried every which way to, to lose weight. And I did keto for a while and keto never really served me well. Um, I have a lactose intolerant that I didn't actually find out till well after I yeah. really got into Til keto. Fasting. Keto would tell you that you were lactose and, intolerant because yeah, so much and, of it's based on milk, cheese, and dairy. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, ne- I was always inflamed when I did keto and I didn't really lose much when I was on it. And I was like, you know, I did really well on intermittent, intermittent fasting. And around that same time, I had gone to a, a, an event. We were part of a Volkswagen club here in Idaho and I'd gone to a Volkswagen event and my sister had shown up to it because we were on the east side of the state and my sister lives over there. She'd showed up to it and she literally looked like her high school self again. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And she said, I'm just doing an OMAD like lifestyle. So I'm just eating once a day. I eat dinner with the kids and, and my husband and and, then, and you all had not talked about the OMAD is one meal a day is the term. Yeah. Was, but you all had not talked about it. No, no, we don't really talk about our diet life. Yeah. <laughs> like, because you're competitive with each other. Not really. No, we're not. Um, especially in that way. Like, Good. I've actually always been the bigger sister, but I've just I'm shaped totally different than my sister too. Like, I just have different muscle structure than right. her and. Right. She's very petite and always has been, but she was tiny. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she said, I'm just doing one meal a day. And I'm like, that's crazy, Mandy. What, <laughs> what do you mean you're only eating one meal a day? And she's like, well, it's called intermittent fasting. And then she kind of told me a little bit about it, but she was just drinking water. I mean, she was clean fasting, but not really, mostly because she won't drink diet drinks at all either. So like she was clean fasting on accident. She hadn't actually looked up anything about clean fasting either. Happy accidents. But she told me about OMAD. And so I started doing some mad research (laughs) on one meal a day. And during that research, um, Jen Stevens, Delay Don't Deny Facebook group popped up. And so I really just hung out in the background of that for a while and saw what everybody else was doing. And then it prompted me to purchase her book. And so the first book I purchased, which Fast Feast Repeat was out at the time, but the the name of the Facebook page was Delay Don't Deny. So I bought that book first, which I'm glad I did because it's so much easier of like a book to get through. I read it in like two days and knew how to clean fast and, and then like really that's where my story started. It was about September of 2020. I learned how to clean fast and my body recomposition was amazing between just September 1st and the end of the year. It was, I was a totally different person by the end of the year. And how much weight loss was that? About 40 pounds. That's a lot. Um, Yeah, it was, it was maybe closer to 35 I kind of didn't keep great records back then. Yeah, it was but, probably a little closer to 35. I've lost a total of 60 now um, wow. since then. Yeah. And most of that was actually between September and May, June area. So nine um, months. Yeah. Right. Nine months. Uh, 60 pounds in nine months. Then how many sizes was that? Um, I went from a size 16 to a size six. Wow. So. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, I mean, there are no words to describe the feeling of things getting smaller. And sometimes the scale doesn't always no. reflect that. <laughs> exactly. That's a huge part of my story, too, is um, in May of last year, I went to the uh, local university here in Boise and they have a. Um, is that Boise State? Yes. Yes. Boise. We State. love Boise State. Because they played Arkansas one time and my son thought it was Noisy State. So we always say we love Noisy State. But yes, I'm familiar. Um, So I went to the university and they have like a health department area and they do body composition testing. And so I got a body scan done and um, it was actually in the bod pod. It looks like it's like the shape of an egg. It's very interesting. Right. It uses pressure. That's a real telling barometer that I don't know if I want to know. I don't know if I want to get in a bod pod. Right. It's a little scary, but it's so informative. Um, so I've always been more of a body style that is just heavy. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. I'm heavy for my size. 
Um, I have like large muscle groups. And so those take up quite a bit of, of weight. And so it is something that like, I've, I haven't been an actual healthy weight on the BMI chart ever. And are you <laughs> now? When, uh, no, I'm not. I'm only five foot four. So I'm, I'm like 20 pounds away from being on the healthy side of the BMI But what chart. were you in high school? I was 145 pounds in high school, I think, um, at five foot four. So um, I still like just heavy. I'm and because I didn't look 145 yeah. pounds. I was yeah. I was small, just like the rest of them, but stronger than most of the rest of right, them. Right, right, too. right. It just makes me mad though that we ha- have a BMI. I mean, what a silly thing! If you're mm-hmm. my husband and son are both athlete. They were athletes. They're both very very fit. They would be. They'd be out oh, fat on the BMR, BMI, but you see them in person, you go, now what team did you play for? You know, it's just yeah. dumb. It's just an arbitrary measure that we try to squeeze ourselves into. And if you're wearing a size six and you're five, four, I think you win. You Yeah. You're- and I mean, I can look at myself and see where some weight probably does need to come off. And, but I'm not, I'm definitely not nearly as worried about it as maybe I was prior to my body scans. Like- it was a good, it was a good tool for me. So you did that. And when, what month was that? It was in May. Okay. After you lost most of that. Uh, yeah. Pounds. I really haven't lost any more weight. I mean, I fluctuated, but okay. I haven't really lost any more weight since about June. So I was right about where I am yeah. now. I might've been like four or five pounds heavier during that scan than I currently am. And what did it tell um, you? It told me that I, my body fat percentage was like 36%. Yeah, it was 36% back then. Um, it also, uh, it told me my um, lean mass was 108 pounds, um, which is decent for a female that's five yeah, four. I really don't know what all that means when I see yeah. those numbers. Because like everybody else, I'm trained to look at the number on the scale and what size I wear. Right, right. But, and it's that's just as important, I think, is as uh knowing what um your like body mass index really actually is. So it didn't give me a new body mass index. It just told me what my body fat percentage was. And I, I felt like the lean the lean mass gave me goals. Like good. I want to increase that lean mass, right? I just want to be stronger. I'm nearing my forties. I'm thirty eight, I'll be thirty nine here in a month or so, or two months. And, um, so increasing my lean mass is quite important to me because you start losing it pretty quickly after the age of 40. Like it's a a rapid decline if you're not actively working for it. So that was important to me to know that number, to make sure that during my weight loss, I wasn't losing any muscle because that's, that was not my goal. And you were not right. Cause the science no. tells us we don't, I just had a, a client come to me and say, my doctor wants to know, am I, am I, or told me that I'm going to lose uh, muscle during this. And I looked it up and there's nothing that corroborates it. In fact, the science says the opposite. You preserve it. Yeah, exactly. So speaking of, uh, like two weeks ago, which is about, I think that Darren, your producer reached out to me right after I had posted this, but, um, I went to see a nutritionist, um, because we're doing the, we're in the middle of the kernels challenge again right now. And so I thought, you know, I am doing a lot more weight training. I'd really like to know what my lean mass actually is again. So they do a body composition at, um, the nutritionist that works for, um, first responders. So I went to, to that office and got my body composition scan done again. And my lean mass had gone up to 112 pounds. So, wow. so it I gained did four increase. pounds. Yeah, I gained four pounds of muscle. Um, my actual body weight was a pound less than it was in May when I had gotten on the scan. This was early j- January. I gained a little bit of weight through my Christmas treats. I call You're it fine. my Christmas inflammation. <laughs> yes, that's, you know what? That's what it was. Yeah, Christmas you inflammation. Ate, it, right, you ate gluten, you didn't poop enough, you didn't have enough water with electrolyte. I mean, I know, we yeah, we yeah. all walk through it. But way too much peanut brittle. <laughs> way too much peanut brittle. Oh, mine was yeah. Italian cream cake. But you know, that's when... You know, and I love me some marketing. I love the way that people can sell things, but that's how they get us is, well, January 1st, you need to start your diet when no, Mm -hmm. you need to eat more salt, poop, quit eating gluten 
and quitty and drop the peanut brittle. <laughs> yes, yeah. it. And throw intermittent the peanut fast. brittle away. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so that was just that was one pound on the scale, but you gained four pounds in muscle. Yep, and my lean mass went down by five pounds. So that is so I, that's that's so telling, Megan. Yeah. It, it's a shame you can't walk around with that, or when you go to your doctor, walk around with or tell your doctor this is really my number, not what's on the scale. Not that your doctor even cares right. what's on the no. scale, but we do. No. Yeah, my doctor, she she definitely uses her eyes when I walk in. She um I just the same day I had the nutritionist appointment, I actually had my doctor's appointment too, and she is quite impressed with just Good. my blood work and how it's coming Good. back. Good. She told me, Megan, you're just an inspiration. You're awesome. not only have you lost this weight, but you've just kept it off. And that's yeah. not something I see a lot of people do. So, well, we're on, not yeah. on a diet. So did you get mm -hmm. to have the evangelistic moment where you could sit there and try to sell her on what fasting, the benefits of fasting? Yes, I did. I gave her, I told her all of the books she should read about it. Um, I Same with the nutritionist. She didn't know a lot about fasting either, really. Or she's a dietitian, I guess, not it. But yeah. she didn't know she didn't know a lot about fasting either. And she wrote down uh, the Fast Beast Repeat book yeah. and the um, Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. So yeah. um, I sent her in that direction on both of those, so she could kind of understand her fasting clients just as much as as anybody else. But I think anyone listening, if they if if you understand the concepts of intermittent fasting and that it's a health plan with the side effect of weight loss, mm -hmm. that you would share this podcast with people. You would tell your healthcare providers, start educating them because we all know in med school, they don't get any nutrition counseling. And this isn't about nutrition. This is about mm -hmm. insulin resistance. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and once you understand the root cause, if we're looking at root cause, I'm looking at root cause illness. A lot of people are. The root cause is insulin resistance. And so you were insulin resistant for so long. And mm -hmm. you're now becoming the only sensitivity I approve of, and that's insulin sensitivity. The rest yep. of it is part of the cancel culture. Yes, this is my cancel culture. Canceling the five meals a day and get down to one, maybe one and a half. <laughs> one <laughs> or two. Uh, wh I what is it. your eating schedule now? So I eat, um, I don't eat until I get home from work. So I eat after five o'clock and wow. I eat dinner and then I call it a day. Sometimes I'll have like a couple dates with peanut butter for dessert. But other than that, yeah, I, That's and I eat a pretty so like broad diet. I'm not, um, I mean, I still eat grains, um, but I watch my grains like, so I'm gluten free as well. Um, I have also realized that gluten is definitely like it's on the no list for me. Um, I think it is for most people. It's just that I we're all so addicted because it's so dang good. I think you don't, I think that's what fasting has opened up for me more than anything else is realizing the foods that feed me properly. Um, the ones that I digest well and that make me feel the best. I mean, cause it's really very evident if I eat something that doesn't agree with me because I'm eating in such a small window that I know exactly what I put into my body every day. So, yeah, so how do you handle that? Do you have kids? I do. Okay. So when you get home, are you cooking? Has your husband already started it? Cause aren't you kind of really starving by then? I'm not though. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. It's kind of, and I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, I've noticed when, once I started a pretty regimen exercise program, I stopped having that three o'clock hunger. Um, but I used to get a, like at three o'clock, my stomach was like, hello. <laughs> right. Feed me. Mm -hmm. um, but I started exercising at noon. They started a group workout program this January at work. So one of our guys in our training group that trains all of our new troopers, he has started a workout group for all of us ladies that sit behind desks all day long. Good. Um, and gentlemen, it's mostly ladies that show up. We every once yep. in a while we'll have a a random guy from our financial department show up, but um, mostly ladies. But they um, he it's about a half hour and we do weight training, um, Good. every day. So we have like a leg day, arm day, core, all of that. And so that's five days a week. And I have noticed every time I'm in the middle of that training, I get that growly stomach that I used to yeah. get at, at three. And so I'm fairly certain I'm just switching over to like ketosis or something at that time. Probably. That I never thought more, of it that way. Yeah. Where my body just is like, well, yeah. we're just eating fat now. And so it's, mm -hmm. it, 
it's using my fat for energy at that point instead of um, asking me to feed it. And so I actually am not hungry until I'm, I usually like, we'll start snacking as I'm cooking. Like I'm cutting up the peppers and then yeah. I might eat a couple, <laughs> you know? Well, okay. But, well, let's, let's then encourage people listening. Cause I even told you as we or right before, sometimes when I do these fasting interviews, all of a sudden I think of all the things I want to eat, even though yeah. it is 1030 in the morning here in Little Rock, Arkansas, I am not close to my window, but it, it's just the power of suggestion, right? Yeah, yeah. But what a good reminder that you said that when we make the switch over, there's a little bit, it's a bumpy ride for like one minute. Yeah. Hunger doesn't even last two minutes because mm -mm. they've measured it. Hunger does not last. The signal doesn't last long because your body then says, all right, you're not going to eat. I'll get the belly fat first. Yeah. Works on the belly fat and then gets the hip fat or whatever. So that's just a good reminder, Megan, for people that when, if you are starting your fasting journey, or if you've I've been doing it for this is my fifth year, but I still have a period where I think, am I hungry? And I'm not. Yeah. I know I'm not, but all of a sudden food sounds good. And then I get past it. I ride the wave. And then it's, I, I like eating like at about three o'clock in the afternoon. Three, three to six is kind of my favorite, you know, yeah. if, if I were to pick one, but it, it's still just a window and it's the window to remind me that I don't have to eat now. And you don't. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it used to be three o'clock for me. Like every day at three, I'd be like, I need a snack and I would eat a snack. I mean, three. So my window used to be like three to six, seven o'clock yeah. whenever I closed it. It's usually never over four hours. Um, and now like, because I am not hungry at three, like I don't even have that hunger pang at three. Like wow. it's, it happens so much earlier in the day. And I think it's because I'm burning through that energy just a little faster I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. I just, it's, I'm a study of one. <laughs> that's <laughs> this right. is how my body works. Well, so. and it's a thing, even Jen Stevens says this all the time. And I am, it's because the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, New York, where we, a lot of us got our certification and I did too. We talk about bio-individuality, meaning mm -hmm. you, we are all really a study of one. We know there's some science about metabolism mm -hmm. and hormones, which are the two things that control how much food you put on the fork and how often, right? Mm -hmm. Those things that those hormones are loud and they communicate and tell us we need to eat. But it's learning that your window of now five to seven, you probably have a two hour window if you, if you even have that sustains yeah. you and does well for you. But somebody else says, gosh, I have to eat. I have to eat six hours and there's no judgment. We're like, oh, great. That works for you. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Every, everybody is different. And, and everybody asks me like at work, cause they have seen, they have seen the transformation, especially cause so many of them were away from work when it all happened. Like we were working from yeah. home and they came back and a lot of them were shocked at how much weight I had That's lost. Great. And, and so then I got a ton of questions right after they, everybody came back from the pandemic and that, uh, you know, what are you doing? And I would tell them, and I, several of them started fasting. Some of Good. them still are, some of them are having some success. Some of them are in weight loss stalls. Um, but yeah, we just encourage each other to do what's best for us. No judgment at all on what your yep. hours are. A lot yep. of them wanted to try to just jump into a 20 hour fast with me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I worked into this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it takes a minute. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, Jen talks about ripping the bandaid off kind of mentality for some people, mm -hmm. but you don't have to, we're not, no. this isn't a race. No one's competing no. with each other. We're just right. all doing it within our time. Now, one thing you keep mentioning that kind of now people in the health space are not, they don't, they're not a hundred percent on board and it's exercises role in weight loss because now the science is saying, okay, it may not help you with weight loss, but it helps you lose fat, right? And fat is a different density than muscle. Mm -hmm. Though they five pounds of fat weighs the same as five pounds of muscle, but five pounds of fat is bigger, blobbier, yeah. and five pounds of muscle is dense, right? There's density. Lean, leaner and tighter. Yes, leaner yeah. and tighter. So that I I love hearing that because you know you've always heard you can't outrun a bad diet. And I've said there are a lot of fat people on the treadmill at the gym. Mm -hmm. It's because they're not addressing the right thing. But so you right. are addressing your hormonal imbalance, which is 
insulin resistance, ghrelin, leptin, YY peptide, all these things that control mm -hmm. that. And then you're attacking it though with the very thing, the other thing you're doing that is so valuable because you said you are in your late thirties, I'm 20 years ahead of you, is that we reduce the amount of testosterone and all hormones we re mm -hmm. release as we age. Well, you keep your testosterone high, how? By lifting heavy weights and that's what yep. you're doing. Yep. It's, uh, it's been eye-opening because I didn't actually hit my weight loss stall until I started exercising. So oh. when, yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, so, so there, it, it is not, exercise is not a panacea, though it's important for your mental health, oh, yeah. for your physical health, for your heart, for your skin, especially if you can get outside. So there's yeah. so many benefits, but weight loss in the way we look at things, because we're not doing a biggest loser type of caloric deprivation. No, no. And it, it, yeah, I don't see, I don't see exercise as a weight loss uh, tool. It's not the, the exercise is to make me stronger and healthier. Good. I need it. That's great. I need it for my mental health. I need it for my physical Good. health. Um, that's what my exercise is for. Um, it's funny because when I first started intermittent fasting, I was really adamant that I wasn't going to exercise at first. I'm going to lose this weight without exercise is because every diet and everything I'd done before, I always coupled them together because they went together in my head, like a diet and exercise. They have to go together so that you can lose weight. And I when it would inevitably injure myself and then I would stop exercising for a while and my diet would just go right to pot and you gain the weight time. and blah blah and blah. I gain the weight and then I would just be like whatever I'm just gonna be fat forever <laughs> like, right right so I you know and this time I was like this is gonna be different I'm going to change my lifestyle and then I will when I'm ready add fitness back into it and it happened so organically that it's it's amazing how organically it happened is I just um like lost all of this fat and all of a sudden my body, I could move my body like, and then I craved it and I wanted to move my body That's and great. it started with walks and then it just kind of snowballed into where I'm at now. And it's, yeah, it's been a good thing. Okay. Let's talk about your diet history. When, okay. when did you start? How old were you when you started probably looking at the other girls in high school going, well, I need to lose weight. Was it then? Like, that's when I remember thinking, yeah, no, I'm going to drink high school. <laughs> not high school? What was no, it? No, it wasn't high school. I um I don't know why not high school. I I didn't ever even think about. I guess I just I wasn't there. Like I wasn't I, I didn't compare myself to other people Good. when I was in high school. Um I it was definitely my early 20s. Um probably pre-marriage right when I first started dating my husband. I would say around 21. Um, I had like never really had much of a weight problem. Um, I never even thought about it. I, it, I was pretty self-confident actually was, I've always been pretty self-confident. Um, but I ne never thought about weight loss until I was, I was about 21 and I started going out to bars and drinking and, um, eating and, you know, eating all the bar food and drinking and like just having fun at 21 and then I started packing on the pounds that way. And I was like, I got to do something about this. And then it was just kind of one diet after another every year until it failed. And mm -hmm. then I would let it mm -hmm. all come back. And then mm -hmm. I really dieted my way up to about 220 pounds. So well, yeah, uh, that's yeah. a common refrain. That's what Jen Stevens says. She mm -hmm. dieted her way to 210. Yeah. And, you know, then she had to do intermittent fasting to help her reach whatever her goal weight is. Because, you know, her story is she doesn't weigh. Yeah. She doesn't weigh. She doesn't even know what she weighs right now. <laughs> right. She doesn't know, but she's small. So she's mm -hmm. probably in the 120s. But she said it doesn't matter. What matters yeah. is what fits and how we're, you know, it's our, it, it, that's it. If we could look at it, not as a shaming, I don't want anyone to feel body shamed by us talking about the successes we've had. I rather would encourage somebody to say, you can do this too. Absolutely. Because the health plan is reducing your insulin resistance because we know insulin resistance is the cause of type 2 diabetes cancer and dementia have roots mm -hmm. not the cause but have roots in uh, insulin resistance so if we look at it that way well don't we all want to reduce our risk of dementia i would say that's a yes yep 
cancer, I would say that's a yes. So it, it and, and it's just because, um, I, I mean, you just hear people talking about body positivity. I'm not talking about your body. I'm talking about yeah. your insulin at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe still talking about your body, but like how it's functioning and how it's working and how we right. can make it work best for you. Like not what it looks like because you're all, everyone's beautiful. Like the, right. the, the weight that you're carrying doesn't make you less beautiful. That's not it. Like, yeah. but don't we all want that, that health that we can carry with us forever so we can live as healthy and happy as long as possible? Like, hundred percent. I want, right. I want this for everybody. I just, Me it's too. such a hard sell, <laughs> but I do. I just want everybody to feel as amazing as I feel. Yeah. It does make you a fasting evangelist. I mean, it really you does. can't, you can't help but tell people cause we feel so good. Mm -hmm. And then when you do start getting up in years, like I am, then people really do start to notice cause they'll say, Oh my gosh, you have so much energy. Your skin looks good. You're slim. Most women who are you know, my age, you know, 59, almost 60, you know, it's almost 60. Um, we'll often not say those same things because yeah. we, women do have a battle and men do too, because of menopause, <laughs> ours is menopause, but right. you know, men also have a testosterone drop and some other things. And so I, that's why I love partnering with women in their forties and fifties and sixties to say, Oh, but you, it's not normal to have this, excessive weight gain there might be a few pounds yeah but you can fight it by time restricted eating i mean yeah. it's really it's like the kid who goes to sunday school and they go hey blah 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 blah. what's the what's the answer jesus remember they would just say jesus because yeah. we're in sunday school <laughs> that's how i am now about intermittent fasting mm -hmm. w what's the remedy for my psoriasis i'm like time restricted eating <laughs> yeah <laughs> i go or give and your then body I talk a break about, yeah right give your body a break yes yeah. food elimination and the other thing you mentioned um was the other thing that I think intermittent fasting has given us uh, the wisdom of the foods that do that we say at IIN love the foods that love you back. Mm -hmm. I love gluten, but it doesn't love me back. Yeah. And I'm congested this morning because I was on a gluten bender the last few weeks, <laughs> but I was eating sourdough thinking that because it's a fermented cultured, whatever they call that fermented product. Um, but then that would be better. But no, I was, it gave me congestion. It gave me puffiness in my face. It get, you know, so I, I have to break up with it again. I, I know gluten is so busted up that we had to break up. Yeah. Glut, gluten doesn't care, but I had to care about my body, but I only know that because I like you eat just in a smaller window and I can examine what I've eaten. I can be pretty objective and go, Oh, that wine doesn't do well with me. Right. Have you noticed your, reaction to alcohol has changed? Oh yeah. Um, definitely. I, and I drink way, like way less. It's very, yeah. a social event for me now. If I'm going to, cause we so. can't fit it all in. Like I, no. I can't consume alcohol and the appetizer and the entree and the food and the dessert. I can't, yeah, I don't have I enough don't room. Have, I don't have time for it. <laughs> and I don't have time for it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the time for it. And it makes, my exercise even harder the next day. Oh, when I, absolutely. Yeah. So it just, it kind of just bogs you down. You realize how toxic it really is. I mean, if we're going to talk about it, it is it's true. a toxin. It, so. Oh, it so is because you can get reservatol. What was that? Reverse. What's the word? R-E-V-E. Uh, Y'all know that word. It's in red wine. Res yeah, oh, uh, that word. Yeah. I'm sorry. My ADD is kind of hanging on to the wrong thing with it but you can get it now in capsule form or desiccated or some other way, you know, the benefits of the red wine. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, but we, we don't have to drink. No, I mean, we don't have to use that as an excuse. No, but here's <laughs> the other thing. But if you do it listening, I don't care. I'm not looking yeah. at your plate. I'm not judging what you do. I just know for me, because of attrition, I don't consume as much food. I have to be, I have to really be picky about what, yeah. I put on my fork. So I guess you've noticed like your trips to the fast food restaurants have decreased. The Oh yeah. Trips I, to don't, I don't even crave it. I can drive through a drive through restaurant and purchase food for my children and think, Ugh, I can't believe they're eating that. <laughs> That's when we're judgy when it's our kids. What, yeah. what are you eating that for? No, <laughs> so gross. I used to, yeah. I used to take my uh, chiropractor. I would give her, I would see her in the morning. And so I would drive through and pick her up something and take it to her just as a little treat. And she liked Chick-fil-A. 
And she would say every time, I cannot believe you can order that and not eat it. And I go, I didn't even think, it doesn't even cross my mind. It has no appeal to me. Right. And people do, like, they lose their mind about it. I go, I do, um, I go to, like, conferences for work, and they'll do, like, luncheons and stuff at these conferences, and I'll sit with my group and, uh, like, participate, <laughs> in, but I don't eat with them, and they're like, you have so much control. Like, it, it's not, it has nothing to do with control. It's just, it's, it's not time for me to eat. It's like, just I'm, not time for me to eat. That's yeah. a great way to put it, because I love it when people say, oh, you're so disciplined, self-control. I'll go, no, I'm, it, I, for one thing, we talk about things being window worthy mm -hmm. and your lunch of that sandwich and chips isn't something that if I, since I get full so quickly, I'm not going to waste it on that. Yeah. I'm, I want, I'm not going to want dinner because my body's so used to eating yeah. just once a day. Ha and have you, well, like what's the longest feasting window that you've had in the last two years? Um, so like I did loosen up around Christmas a little bit, like I would do, cause it feels like you just have too many events that happen right. around. So yeah. I have had, you know, six to eight hour windows, um, in the last couple years, I don't enjoy them. Um, I actually have tried to do, um, like ADF, the alternate day fasting a couple of times and I struggle every time and it's not the fast that I struggle with. It's the feast I struggle the with. The refeed. A lot of yeah. people say that, Megan. What, what is that? I, I've done it only a few times and it's, it's hard either way, but you just feel like you can't get in enough food on the refeed day. Yeah. And it's not, it's, I just feel so exhausted and oh, full yeah. all day long. Yeah. I just, I don't feel good. Um, yeah. I feel my best in that fasted state. So that's why I've also chosen that evening window is because I am way more productive at work when I'm not bogged down by having to digest food. As soon as I eat, I feel like I'm ready for bed and I have been known to fall asleep watching TV on the sofa Absolutely. at night. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And no wonder we were sleepy all that time in college and yeah. we had trouble getting through those afternoon classes or whatever we had to do mm -hmm. younger where we were eating all day. Yeah. We were trying to digest the food, which takes, <clears throat> it takes a lot of energy. Oh, it does for sure. For your body. For sure. Um, what are some non-scale victories you have had in thought, oh, this is why I, I love fasting. I know they're my favorite. I have a bunch. I should have printed them out. I printed them out when I uh, talked to Graham, but <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Uh, I, I do have a lot. I think I have a list. I keep a spreadsheet that has my daily weight and then I average it out for my weekly weight so that I don't wow. go crazy. That's awesome. And then, and then my second page is all of my non-scale victories and I have well over 200 non-scale victories at this point, but they're- Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. <laughs> they're small. I, I actually, anytime I have something that I'm like, I couldn't have done that when I was bigger, I write it down. Um, and then it's been helpful during my weight loss stall because I didn't know what was happening during that weight loss stall. And um, even like measurements, I'd put my measurements down every time I would lose any inches on my waist or my thighs, I would put those down too. But I mean, they were as simple as I didn't have to hold on to the wall this morning when I was putting my underwear on, you know, um, I can breathe while I clip my toenails. My husband mistaken me for one of my kids. Oh, <laughs> you know? that's cute. Um, there's, it's just, there's so many of them. Um, I, my mom started intermittent fasting shortly after I learned about the clean fast and I told her about Jen's books and she picked them up and read them and she started clean fasting as well. And she was a rip the bandaid off straight to a 20 hour fast. Wow. Um, but she had never had a weight problem her whole life. Um, kind of, I mean, she w always lived in moderation too. So she, but never had a weight problem until she hit menopause and then she started gaining belly weight. Um, and so she was still frustrated with any, all of, any of the belly weight that she had gained during menopause. And so she started fasting too. And when she started fasting, she shrunk out of all of her clothes and then gave me hers. Oh, and good. she was a size <laughs> six before she started. So good. she, I inherited a lot of her. She brought me a whole like sack full of clothes one day. And I tried them on just to see how far away I was from fitting into my mom's old clothes. 
And that was one of my non-scale victories is I thought there was no way this pants were going to fit. And I just pulled them straight on and buttoned them and was just flabbergasted, just beside myself with the fact that I fit into my tiny mom's clothes. (laughs) So You said flabbergasted. You were flabby gasted. Yeah. Your your flab was gasted. It was. (laughs) It was gone. It was gone. (laughs) That's great. Those are non-scale victories. What about medicine or health conditions? Anything there? So I didn't have any real health conditions. I can tell you I went back on my blood markers just recently because I just got new blood tests last week. So, um, and my fasting blood sugar was always 99, 98, 97. It was always in that higher range. And that was something I was always nervous about. My dad was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at 40. So I knew I was reaching wow. that age yeah. and I was, I mean, shaped like him. So I, that's the main reason I started fasting to begin with is I just Good. knew I needed to get my weight down because I didn't want to be diabetic. I didn't want that for me. I didn't want that for my husband. I didn't want that for my children. Um, so I, that's why I had started in the first place. And so the, this last time I went and got my, um, my glucose levels done, it was 72. And, um, so That's from impressive. the high nineties, always down to 72 was, uh, now, have you read the, why we get sick book by Dr. Bickman? I haven't. Girl. I need to read it <laughs> because it's our fasting insulin that has a 20 year predictability on your health. Glucose is the very last thing we should check. Glucose is not really the marker because many obese people will still have blood glucose in the nineties, but if you check their fasting insulin, it's really bad. And that is the biggest marker. We want it low. Yeah. Dr. Hyman likes it at five and somebody else does six, but they really want it like at two or three. Mine's at 2.2. Mine's the lowest my nurse practitioner has ever seen. Oh, wow. In fact, it flagged it that it was too low. (laughs) And so, you know, you get to Googling. And so it said I had a risk of dementia and all these other things. So I reached out to Dr. Bickman and said, look, I've read your book or I've listened to it because um, it's it's done so well. George Newbern is the actor who reads it and he's from Arkansas. So I felt this connection. Um, But in it, he, so I reached out and said, I'm at 2.2. It flagged it in the too low range. And he said, you're you're on the right path. Don't listen to what you Google. They're trying to sell a drug to help, you know, yeah. you know, if you look at it that way, that they have to, big pharma has to push things in order to keep the lights on in their homes and their second yeah. homes and their third homes. Um, he said, don't worry about it. You're fine. So he said, our goal, everyone's goal should be reducing the fasting insulin. If you could get it to two, but not a lot of people have that, but at, I would love to have seen what yours was in the beginning and yeah. what it is now, because you're, you're, and it's the whole thing of insulin sensitivity is where you are insulin sensitive. It's just yeah. how insulin sensitive and because you're a fat burner. Yeah. And I'm sure I was insulin resistant. I mean, I, if I walked up to a wall, my belly hit the wall before any yeah, other Dr. Bickman said, if you have weight to lose, you are insulin resistant. Yeah. Then he goes down the other things. If you have high blood pressure, you're likely insulin resistant. If you have PCOS, if you have acne, mm-hmm. if you um, well, that's obviously. something that totally cleared up through fasting too. Is like I don't right? wear makeup anymore. Like I just don't get pimples anymore. It's yeah. crazy. And I like was constantly broke out before. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. And like I, my mostly like on my neck and uh, forehead area, it was super weird. Like I had never had like pimples on my neck ever. And like, about two years before I started fasting, I was getting, and oh, yeah. I'm sure it's like very hormonal. Like it, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, and insulin's a hormone. Yes. Yes. So people always think when we say anybody in the health space says hormones, they go, I know I'm going to have my estrogen checked. I'm like, honey, mm-hmm. there are a lot of other things besides your estrogen that are making you tick every yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, um, did, I think we're way out of whack. <laughs> did you have uh, skin tags? I did not. I did not have any skin tags. Um, I didn't have any like serious health concerns. Like I was always kind of teetering on the high end of everything. Um, And now like everything is like so ideal. It's, it's amazing. Blood pressure is fine then. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
you know, for women, they start because your monthly cycle has so much to do with insulin resistance because, you know, PCOS is like really high now, polycystic yeah. ovarian syndrome. Yeah. Um, and that's all insulin resistance. And mm-hmm. the problem with insulin resistance too and weight is the fatter you get, the more insulin resistant you get, the more insulin resistant you get, the fatter you get. Yep. So it's, it's, it's this, such an endless cycle. It is. That's- it is. And it's getting off that, you know, hamster wheel to start going, okay, I'm just going to eat. I, you know, it sounds crazy when, when it was first presented to me, I said, well, I can't do that because I have hypoglycemia. I mean, you know, and then I would die. Mm-hmm. I thought I would, I thought I would die, Megan, if I didn't eat several times in the day, I, I couldn't even do anything where we would skip breakfast. Yeah. Like that seemed so far. And so the first day I did it, I ripped the bandaid off. I mean, sort of from doing a six hour window. Cause that's what was presented to me as the option. I thought there was one way to do it. Now we know there are a thousand ways to do it. Yep. Um, but I remember asking, it was my son who told me, I said, how, how am I going to do this? What, what if I get hungry? He, he was like, mom, you're not going to die. I go, if I do, it's on you. Yeah. You know, it's I was all like, your fault. <laughs> it is all your fault. And so I didn't die. In fact, I kept a kind bar, you know, those kind, I don't buy any of those processed foods or anything now, but I always had snacks everywhere just in case I got hungry and I had my kind bar in my purse. Um, cause I knew I could do 18 and six in the beginning, but then, um, I do TV commercials and sometimes my TV commercials are during my, at hour 19. Well, I know now not to eat before a TV commercial cause I, it's too sleepy. Yeah. So I remember calling my son, he was a student at LSU and I, at, in Baton Rouge. And I said, uh, what am I going to do? My commercials are at 19 hours. How am I going to do it? He's like, you're again, you're, you're going to be fine. And I said, well, I've got my kind bar in case I need it. Six months later, because you know, it takes forever for me to clean out a purse and there's so much crap. That thing had broken into a thousand pieces. <laughs> I never needed it. But that's how we've been trained, Megan, by food commercials, marketing. I, I've made it very clear. I've not turned on the TV since March 12th, 2020, since the pandemic okay. hit. Good job. Because I, I can't live with bad news. We're all going to die. The sky's falling. I, I, I'm just not wired that way. <laughs> me too. So I watch, I watch streaming services and there are no ads, you know, on Netflix. Mm-hmm. So I, but I don't know about all these food commercials until my husband watches sports and politics. So he will tell me, he'll go, did you know Domino's? Has, and he doesn't even eat this kind of stuff. They have a new pizza. And I go, they make it look good, don't they? I go, that's their job. <laughs> their job is to make that crap look good, but it's crap. Yeah. And so that's what it makes you do in intermittent fasting is I'm just not going to waste my time. Another story I've told, and it's just the importance of insulin and how it is triggered even with zero calorie foods. And one time um, that's, I was eating maybe at this point between one and five, you know, again, I I switch it up a lot Mm -hmm. and it was like one o'clock and even though it was my time to eat, I was going to delay it because I was going to have a bigger meal later in the day. And I knew that maybe five o'clock I was going to have dinner or something. And I may be off in hours, but you'll get the point. So I'm driving through. And so I, you know, roll down the window. I'd like, only thing I get is unsweet iced tea. I'm not a coffee drinker. So I get unsweet iced tea at these, if I do a fast food just for the beverage. And she said, well, we've got raspberry flavoring. And I was like, yeah, because it was my window was open. I was like, yeah, okay. So I had it. And so if you think about insulin's role, the pituitary tells the pancreas to release the insulin to bring that blood glucose down. Mm -hmm. Well, it did. And now I bottomed out. I felt ill. I was sweaty, shaky, had nausea. Mm -hmm. And I had to, I I ran to the mall to get lipstick because that is, if if you're going to die, you at least want to look good, right? (laughs) So I was at the mall getting lipstick and I was, I did not feel well. And it's, so I had to go to Chick-fil-A to get some chicken and lettuce. I had to have some protein. Yeah. And, and it's because I was tricked into thinking, well, it's just raspberry flavoring. I mean, I'm in my window, Mm -hmm. but how bad you feel when you tease yourself. Yeah. And that's why I'm sure you're the same way. You can't, people always say, well, Lisa, when you're, prepare because I'm a home cook. When you're preparing food, do you, if it's not your window, are you, you just grabbing a bite of the grapes or some of the cheese? I go, no, because when I go to eat, I go to eat. I don't yep. go to, I don't want a few bites of something. No. 
Do you feel that way? Like when it's today? (laughs) Yeah. Same. I, um, once I'm ready to open my window, I want to eat, I want to get dig into it and eat. I was, when you were talking about the kind bar in your purse, I'm like, that wouldn't have worked for me. I would have been angry after the kind bar. That's it. Right. But I didn't know that was in the very beginning. Now, if I were going to bring food, I would have to bring the entire T-bone steak and baked potato. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, what, yeah. What, what's the longest you've gone without eating? 36, um, 40? 42. I think I, the 42 is the longest I've gone. And that was even more by accident. I think I meant to do closer to like a 40 hour fast. And then it took us a real, we were doing breakfast the next morning with our family. And oh, okay. it took us a long time to get into the restaurant that morning. And so it ended up being a longer fast than I had actually originally anticipated. But I ate my whole breakfast that morning. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. I've only done it a few times. And in fact, my son was, he would call me and say, like I was at 36 hours and it was, I said, well, it's 36 hours. He said, are you hungry? It was like eight in the morning. I went, no. And he goes, you don't have to eat. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have a contractual obligation to eat. Just eat well when you do eat today. Mm-hmm. And so I think I did maybe 40 or 42 Yeah. But it's crazy. You even have periods where you don't have hunger during those longer fasts. Yeah. A lot of periods. I don't, and I don't get a ton of hunger anymore. Anyways, every once in a while, like I said, a growly stomach when I'm, uh, I think I'm sure it's when I'm switching over. And I love that. I, I, because I've had several clients, one even asked me, he's lost 90 pounds. He said, I swear I feel autophagy. He goes, I swear. I said, I do. He goes, I swear I feel that, that my, my waist is getting smaller, you know, during about hour 20 or so. And I said, you kind of do it's yeah. two, you're firing Dr. Fung says you're firing the adrenaline that gives you so much energy that mm-hmm. you just feel amped up that you do feel like my body is doing the best it can. Yeah. That's the, also with the long fast, it's that next morning when I'm at that 36 hour mark, I just feel like I could go run a marathon. Like if I'm going to go run a marathon, it's going to be right now. (laughs) Yeah. Just, and when I first started fasting, this is like one thing I tell everybody that I like help is when you first start, don't be surprised when that time comes, when you have that extra energy that your body doesn't know what to do with it. It's almost it's almost an anxious energy. Like you feel like you can't concentrate until you go for a walk and to let your body get used to it because it does, it does. It stops being an anxious energy and just becomes an efficient energy. But at first it is, and it probably is around two, three weeks into fasting that you get that like weird. The first time you see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's around 16, 18 hours and it just like, it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, I was not prepared. No one told, I just didn't know much about it. So I mm-hmm. didn't know. And the first time I was about four or five weeks in, I had probably a 23, 24 hour fast. And I remember, cause I couldn't get to food. I yeah. could, you know, I could, and the body, our bodies are so protective of us that it just says, don't panic. I'll just eat the fat. I'll feed you. I'll eat yeah, the fat here. I I, yeah, I got this. And then you move on to the next thing. And so it's really crazy. And, um, because we travel by car and go places. There are a lot yeah. of, you know, rural areas that don't, I'm not going to eat fast food. So, or gas station food, or lamp I'm, I'm not, food. <laughs> never, 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 never. I mean, I'm not that hungry. I'm never that hungry that I, again, Jen always says hunger is not an emergency. Right. So I do, I mean, I know that my body will just make it. So it's easy because we're empty nesters now. We've been married 34 years. And so it's easy for my husband and me. But what what about your husband and kids? That's that's a transition for them because mom's not making 19 meals a day anymore. Right. I I still cook for them. I actually, I work 410, so I'm off on Wednesdays. And and I bake often on Wednesdays. Um, Yeah, usually like a gluten-free bread. So I make my own gluten-free bread. Um, I have my youngest daughter is gluten-free as well. So um, she likes to take sandwiches for lunch. Like this schools don't help with gluten allergy at all. Like that's all they feed the children. Um, (laughs) But they, uh, so we make her own lunch and I'll make her like gluten-free bread on Wednesdays. Typically I'll make a loaf and Um, I usually make a big dinner on Wednesdays too. So I cook almost most of the day on Wednesday, um, and never feel the need to eat. It doesn't bother me. Um, 
first the like cooking of the bacon in the morning on the weekends was rough. Yeah. Like yeah. I remember wanting to murder my husband. Yes. Homicide first... would have been you were justified. <laughs> Yeah. I actually think that's one of my non-scale victories too, is I did not feel murdery thoughts when Matt made bacon this morning. Yes. Right. Right. That's but it's, it has, this whole thing has been a transition period. Um, my husband, I think is finally at a point where he is really actually trying to fast too. He's seen my success in it and he's wanting that same success. And I've told him over and over again, you don't have to fast. I think it's going to be the healthiest for you and the best option. Yeah. But I want him to do it right as well. So in we, his uh, own time and terms. Yes. Yes. It's got to be if you're not ready or not ready. Right. Yeah. Not ready yeah. or not ready. Yeah, you're right. Well, you've inspired many people just uh, with this and seeing you on the Fasting Highways uh, Facebook group. And that's a great podcast too, Graham Curry. He's just mm -hmm. so endearing. And your story's great. So you Thanks. keep telling everybody in Idaho, get y'all will have, Idaho will have the thinnest state police and law enforcement Leos in the country. Thanks. They, they're all pretty fit already. <laughs> yeah, I bet. They've got some work to do. I mean, they, they're out there hustling all the time. They are. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.